And we have some breaking news for you right now coming out of the Middle East, and this comes from UNIFIL, the United Nations Peacekeeping Force in Lebanon. It says that uh, in a statement last night, a peacekeeper at UNIFIL's headquarters in Nakura was hit by gunfire due to ongoing military activity nearby. He underwent surgery at the Nakura Hospital to remove the bullet and is currently stable. It says we do not yet know the origin of the firing, the shooting. Also last night, it says, buildings in our UN position in Ramya sustained significant damage due to explosions from nearby shelling. We remind all actors of their obligations to ensure the safety and security of UN personnel and premises, including avoiding combat activities close to UNIFIL positions. And for context, of course, in the last few days, Israel um, has struck the UNIFIL peacekeeping force. Two Indonesian peacekeepers were injured. Previous day, two other peacekeepers were injured. And in fact, uh, on Sky News last night, um, uh, the UN said that they be believe that they were deliberately targeted by Israeli forces. On this occasion, uh, it's not clear yet where that gunfire came came from, but one UN peacekeeper is now in hospital after having to be operated on to remove a bullet. Uh, we will keep you across all of these developments on this breaking news as and when we get it. Well, eh, staying with the Middle East then, uh, let's discuss everything that's happening there, including those evacuation orders in, in the last few hours from Israel. Joining me now is Yasmin Mather, researcher at the University of Oxford Middle East Centre. Good afternoon to you. Um, let's stay with the UN peacekeeping force uh, um, issue right now and that breaking news. Uh, this seems to be happening with increased frequency now uh, and a serious concern and this hasn't happened before at this kind of level. Uh, you are right the level has increased but this is partly to do with the land attacks on the um, uh, uh, southern borders of Lebanon and uh, Andrea Terenti the UNIFIL the UN spokesperson for UNIFIL is saying that the attacks are uh, deliberate towards the video cameras, the equipment, the towers they have. And as a result of this, a number of uh, 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 officers of UNIFIL have been injured. So we can't say this is a serious escalation, uh, especially because the UN is taking a very strong uh, position on this. Yeah, and if we talk about the expanding... Uh, offensives in, in this war, uh, not just um, uh, as the airstrikes and, as we say, the ground activities in Lebanon, but Gaza again today, more strikes in Gaza and renewed evacuation orders uh, uh, where we thought there was literally nowhere else for people to go. They're being asked to move again by Israel. The evacuation orders are against uh, locations that have been had been declared safe. However, as most observers from Gaza tell, tell us and tell you as news agencies, there's really nowhere safe in Gaza. You could be in a, um, in a school which has been uh, allocated or des designated to be a safe place, and yet the number of people who have been killed last week in these schools is quite high. I think given the attention of um, uh, the world towards the situation in Lebanon, uh, there seems to be even more attacks happening in Gaza in the last week or so, uh, while we are all more concentrating on Beirut and Lebanon. Uh, however, there has been widespread condemnation, uh, particularly just yesterday from France and Spain, um, saying that uh, what their activities are unacceptable. That was in context of the UN uh, peacekeeping forces being um, targeted. Uh, and President Biden saying that he is asking Israel to be careful what it does and, and where it strikes. Is that enough? 
Well, clearly, the Israeli government is under the impression that it can get away with what it wants to do. And these condemnation come and go. The situations that will probably make a difference is if the flow of arms was stopped. And there is no sign that the Democratic Party or the Republicans, should they come to power in the US in November, have any intention of stopping the flow of arms to Israel. I think the Israeli government has become immune to statements of condemnation. It listens to them and ignores them. And I think if uh, the European countries and if Biden are serious about expressing their opposition to what is going on, um, verbal condemnation one day and uh, confirmations that they will support Israel under all circumstances uh, is not going to be sufficient. No. And if we, we look uh, farther afield and vis-a-vis uh, -vis Iran, um, we are all waiting and wondering what will happen next. And, of course, Israel planning some kind of uh, response to Iran's response to the killing of Nasrallah, this constant tit-for-tat that is now uh, getting incredibly serious. It's now beyond the choreographed and managed version of attacks that Iran's uh, struck with ballistic missiles. Now we're anticipating Israel's. Uh, in your analysis and research, what, what do you think Israel might do uh, or where it could strike? There seems to be a number of options, and it isn't very clear the conversation between Biden and Netanyahu accepted which one of these options. So, the, uh, if you like, the lowest risk one seems to be um, uh, uh, air raids against the air bases and Revolutionary Guard's bases that were used in the ballistic missile attack. Uh, there is the option of Iran's uh, refineries or uh, more extended the oil installations and um, extra extraction of oil in Iran. And then the worst option, I suppose, for the world, not just for Iran, is an attack on the nuclear uh, installations. On this my understanding is that the United States will need to be directly involved if uh, the uh, underground nuclear installations were a target. For that, you do need bunker buster um, bombs that would be uh, stronger than what Israel has used in other parts of the Middle East. Um, and one presumes that the United States does not want escalation at this stage, um, and therefore that option might be left for later. However, there is also the option of um, a missile attack or bombing of uh, overground um, installations or industries related to the nuclear um, installations in Iran. So we don't know. There is also the option of um, using a, a kind of attack similar to the pager attack in Lebanon. However, these are all speculations because we don't know what has been decided in Israel or indeed if anything has yet been finalised. Right. Yasmin Mather uh, from the University of Oxford Middle East Centre, thanks very much indeed for your analysis. Thank you.